well, let's start, let's start with Penn GSC, actually. You say that you want this place to be the most intellectually exciting place in the nation for the study of education, right? No, I said the world, but... Okay, the world. So if we want this to be, if we want this to be, to be that place, yep. um, what are the essential ingredients to make it this, that place? We want to lead in two ways. First and most important, uh, in my mind, is leadership through ideas. This is where our research and our development work goes. If I could have talked about John Fantuzzo's early childhood program, I could have talked about uh, some of the assessment instruments that Paul McDermott has uh, built. I could talk about uh, Bob Baruch and uh, his actually inventing the Campbell Collaborative and putting meta-analysis procedures on the map for education and social science. Uh, there are tons of examples. These are ideas. These, we want to be the place that people in education look to to get ideas about how to do their work better. See, the other strategy is the one everybody probably would think of, leadership through people. We get fabulous students. Our students are lights out better than the students any place else I've been. You can check out where I've been. And uh, 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 so it creates a very yeasty environment. These people got all the potential in the world. We just need to figure out how to work with them to take them to the next level. Some of the people we produce are going to be future professors. They're going to have their academic children who are going to become future professors. And if you think about that over a lifetime, that can have a very huge multiplying effect. Just like we produce a principal, just like we produce a teacher. And one teacher over his or her lifetime works with, you know, huge numbers of students. So again, if we can create leaders, leaders in practice, leaders in research, leaders in policy, then we'll have a big impact in that way as well. Uh, ed schools, I think, need to be, and this is the word that people were using when I got here, nimble. Uh, GSC is nimble. You need to be open to a serious, critical evaluation of what you're doing. You need to be open to doing things better. Right now, for example, teacher education. I've been in this field for a long time. Teacher education was never seen as a priority. It was always the, the weak stepsister of everything else that went on, the lowest of the lows. Teacher education is now seen as very important. We're already quite experimental in teacher education. We have a Teach for America site. We have a residence program. We have the Noyce Foundation from the, from the NSF, so we're cutting edge in, in, in math and science. Uh, but we're taking a really hard look at where, what we're doing right now and thinking about this idea of leadership through ideas. Can we take teacher education to a new level that others can emulate? I see entrepreneurship in this, this whole initiative as one attack on how to better connect research and practice. The holy grail, how do you do it? Very difficult. We got good ideas that just don't, they don't get traction. And, uh, uh, but you need that, I, I'm, our, one of our hypotheses is you need to find something that's good and show that it works and then you need an entrepreneurial spirit. You need to bring it to market. I mean, it's an amazingly great university. And they, have, they say, uh, and I, I thought this was just kind of like a throwaway or a cliche, they said, you know, we're founded by Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin's a practical man. They mean it here. Well, education is nothing if it isn't practical. So it is the best university in the world, in my view, to be an ed school in. I, I wasn't ready for the students being so good as they are. I thought they'd be great, but I didn't think they'd be noticeably better than students where I've been before. Those have been two enormously pleasant surprises. I'll tell you another little surprise. Uh, a lot of my, so I'm obviously a, a quantitative guy, and in education we have way more people who are interested in qualitative methodologies. And, in, uh, 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 and GSE has a reputation for great excellence, long history of excellence in qualitative. But I would say that uh, uh, we have great excellence in the quantitative. We have people who are on the cutting edge of quantitative methodologies, but focus more on the application. To my knowledge, we may be as good as it gets for a student who really wants to be in a place that is thoughtful and excellent in both. And that's where you, as the intellectual leader of that school, of the school, comes in to ensure that there is that quality sort of backstop, right? Intellectual leader of the school. I'm just the dean. 
Okay, hi, I'm Andy Porter. I'm at the Graduate School of Education in the University of Pennsylvania. We're in Philly. <laughs> there you go. And you're the dean. And I'm the dean. <laughs>